Welcome back, Quill Pack, to another Click Team Fire Fire tutorial. Very important. We got an Xbox gamepad here. Today we'll be going over how to incorporate your Xbox controller with your Firefly game, which will be helpful for whenever Firefly is ported over to the UPW exporter. Um, first things first, let's just go over the values that I have set to the camera. Um, as you can see, there's not much to it. For this example, you have the engine, you have the camera. We have a primitive node just to show the movement. Um, the movement node to actually handle the movement in the Xbox controller to um, convert the input data from the Xbox controller. Um, we have rotation speed set to 50. Um, vertical set to 0, jump set to 0. Basically those are both set to no. Um, jump height is set to 4. You can increase that, decrease it if you want to. Um, we're not going to have any crosswind or anything. I am going to set up gravity, so I'm going to change that to 1. And we have a step down, and I'll explain what that does later. And just keep in mind that it's set to negative 15. Most importantly, 15, or the negative part. Um, first things first, let me actually turn on collision on some of this stuff. And if you're wondering why I said it's 181, um, it's just going to be round one, which doesn't really matter since we don't have anything in the game. Um, that's just so if I was making a game, the player won't get stuck on like doorways. The 8 is height, and that's um, the Y position is just lower than that. That way we don't get clipped into the ground upon start. Okay, just three lines of code. Stop. Copper. Stop. Sorry. Um, I'm probably going to leave that in, to be honest. It's just three lines of code. We're going to start off with an always commit line. Um, that's going to set up the first person movement. And we are using it with gravity. As I've explained before, the camera is the camera that you want to move. Um, oops. I'm just going to run through these real quickly. Oh, this is something new. Firefly engine is the engine that you want to use, which sounds redundant. But if you have like a local... Um, multiplayer game, you're going to render things differently. For example, if you have a first person on your side, you're going to render arms and a weapon for yourself and full renders for everyone else, but you don't want other people seeing arms and a weapon running around. Um, old mouse, old X mouse, and old Y mouse will remain at zero. And we're going to set the new X and Y mouse to the right stick, because that's typically what's used for looking around in games. So, stick, right, get horizontal position, because that's what we use to look left and right, not 21, player 1. That would be crazy to have 21 people in a game, Let's it's a battle royale game. Um, same thing for the Y mouse, we're going to grab the right stick vertical position of player 1. Rotation speed, we already have that set up, so let's go to values, rotation speed, um, movement is going to be set to a stick as well. And this is where that step down comes into play. So, we don't want the player moving at 100. We don't want the full um, power to be 100. Now we're going to go to sticks. We're going to use the left stick to move. And we're going to get the vertical, the up and down, of player 1. And we're going to divide it by that step down. So let's just get the value, the step down. Okay, the reason that that is negative 15 is because the sticks, uh, the what is this, left stick is actually inverted for some reason. So if I was to leave it at 15, when I press forward, the player will go backwards, vice versa. And when I press or move the stick left, the player will go right. Same thing for strafing, we're going to get the left stick um, horizontal. And divide that by step, I'm just going to type it. Step down of Firefly node camera. Um, we're going to get the vertical. Just run through this real quick. Um, jump. Just triggering jump, which we'll set up later. Jump height. We'll tell... Firefly how high to jump, then we want the headwind, which we don't have set up, grav, which is our normal gravity, and crosswind. 
and now if we were to actually go in there we'll see actually moves around I kinda wish I can put up my input on here I might figure it out I might not we'll see that in post edit um, and you can see that this is a kinda fast rotation you can change that with the rotation speed um, if you want to move faster than this or slower than this you can change the step down if I remember correctly I typically use like four and when you are messing with these values when you're messing with these values just keep in mind that this is based off of 100 so um, if I want four I'll have to do a negative 25 um, negative 20 will be five just keep that in mind when setting up that um, step down value okay on to jumping it's really simple if I remember correctly we are going to get buttons and we will map jumping to X or A. Uh, oh, let's just do A. And copy that and negate it. So either the button is pressed or the button isn't pressed. If the button is pressed, we want to change that jump value. So set jump to 1. Otherwise, we want it to be at 0. Okay, so the way that that works is when we press A, the jump is 1. Firefly reads that the jump is 1 and makes the player jump. Um, when we let go of the button, it resets it. Whoops. There we go. Whoa. Ah, I know what happened. That'll be a crazy in game jump. We forgot to divide by that 10. So, edit. Go back to. Vertical jump jump height divide by 10.0 to turn that into a float. That should be normal now. There we go. Now we don't jump like we're Superman trying to take off. Um, if you can, if you hold the jump button, it'll continue to jump. But that's not what I'm here for. Um, you can do some kind of check to see if the player is on the ground or something in order to get around that. But that's basically it. Um, it's only three lines of code compared to keyboard and mouse, which is seven, eight lines of code, something like that. Um, you have the four move, the two not moving, and then the always command. Um, honestly, I haven't played around with the Xbox controller a lot, so things like opening doors, I'm not even sure how that will work, to be honest. Um, we will probably get into that in a different video. Uh, it is the end of March, so um, I will be posting a overview on Easter, which is Sunday, the Sunday, it's Easter Sunday. Um, so look out for that. have some exciting things coming up for next month, such as a first-person tutorial um, from Godot website and the Godot engine. I will be going over that three-part tutorial that they have on their website under the 3D section. I will be breaking it down into six parts. I will be going over each part over a span of two days so I can get in-depth with it and fully explain things to the best of my abilities, keep in mind that I am learning myself. Um, we have some 3D movement before that. Um, I plan on going over cameras since we are getting into 3D um, stuff that isn't first person so you'll have two types of cameras at least you have a fixed view um, kind of like the Contra remake the Contra 2029 if you ever seen that or uh, Gears of War if you ever played that there's that kind of camera where it's over the shoulder um, there's the GTA camera where you get to rotate around the player uh, top down cameras there's a lot of things you can do um, just good camera practices I've actually recently watched a one hour video going over cameras so you have that to look forward to it's actually a lot there's a lot in regards to cameras that I would have never thought about if I wasn't making games honestly but that's that um, I will see you guys in the next video